Galatians, welcome to Living Strong. Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 1, the privileges that comes through the liberality or Christian liberty or the freedom whom the Son have set free is free indeed. The Father, the Son, the Bride. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Uh, Jesus declared, when I go, I would leave you not comfortless, but I will send you a comfortor, that as many as believed him or received him, they became the sons of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word from the beginning was God. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become genoma, life-giving force, breathing breath of life, current blast of air, okay, the sons of God. Stand fast, therefore, Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 1, stand. And after having done all the stand, stand therefore, what? In the liberty, the freedom, knowing that whom the Son have set free is free indeed. Now let me say unto you that they are, there are many brothers and sisters in Christ that are well-meaning Christians. They love God, but they are bound by the cords of, of Christendom, by the church, by religion, by culture, by the stigmas and the dogmas that comes with the pressure of servitude, they are really high-tech Christian slaves. But they do not know this because they think that they are doing God's just reward. You honor those that have rule over you. Honor means to pay homage to, to give respect to, to highly esteem, to lift up, you see. So what do we say? Pastor's appreciation, pastor's anniversary, the children's um, fun fundraising function, therefore we got the choir uh, meeting functions, we got dues in taxes, and every other things, first lady appreciation, I'm on here, birthdays, celebration, holidays, we sow into that, we give into that, but what does the word of the Lord declare? That the rulers or the principalities or the powers or the leaders or the government is not supposed to be a terror to good works. You see, so the alignment of your life and the forces that be in that alignment are coming together. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not because knowledge didn't come. But when knowledge came, they rejected it. Therefore, the Lord said, you rejected my knowledge. I reject you and your children, in your seed. Why? Because we placed into them the pseudo-mechanism of servitude when it was not out of gratitude towards our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, the son is coming back. The bride is the church. And we ourselves are not ready at this time, and you know it as well as I do, for the uh, bridegroom to come back. But 
You see, he's coming back after a remnant, and there's a remnant that's going to be saved. A church without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And so, therefore, he's saying to clear your mind, clear your heart, clear your soul, cleansing from all superfluity of the flesh, and be you not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? Stand fast, therefore, Galatians 5 and 1, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So, when you see all of these um, man-made landlines of servitude, you got to remember that something very special happened. And, the, uh, and this is the last day of the church. So we're, we're preparing you guys. And, uh, you know, it, 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 us guys to, uh, uh, to be ready when that, when that day of the Lord come. Okay? I want you to look with me in the... Uh, uh, the book of Acts, all right, uh, chapter number 4 and verse number 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart. The Lord our God is one God, okay, and that's all there is to it. We are one with him in unison with him from the foundation or the creations of the world, and one soul. Let me read it again. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Now, oftentimes we will talk about a soul mate in life, but you got to understand that a soul mate in life comes after a soul tie in life. You missed that one, didn't you? You see, as many as you are connected to, you are conformed with that body. So when a person goes out and they have 500 boyfriends, that's too many, five boyfriends, and he have 10 girlfriends, each and every one of those connections in their life, they tie their soul, they tie their mind, they tie that, their spirit to um, that individual. And when they tie to that individual, they, they themselves are now are connected in, in the soul and in the spirit to the individual's that they are with, all right? So what happens is that, now I was looking up the scripture, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it for you guys uh, uh, but, uh, and, and tell you guys. So what happens, no, I'm not going it, to, it's, it's in Romans, as many as you're connected with, but I'm not going to that because it's going to take up too much time. So what happens is that the history of those five people, of those ten people, is brought back into the present. Let's say, for instance, you meet, a, you meet a man. This man has got whatever, how many children? By four or five different women. He is tied mentally, emotionally, have been tied physically to that relationship, whether it's 20, 30 years from the past. He's tied to that. So his soul is connected as one, even though he's separated. All right? The woman goes out. She sleep with three or four different men. She have three or four different children by four or five different men. Okay, that's backward. But anyway, she is connected to all of those men, whoever her husband was, whoever their, their children's father is, whoever the stepdaddy's is, whoever the boyfriend was, whoever the other children's daddy is. All of that is intertwined. Okay, even though she is no longer with them. Okay, 
She is now 50 years old. She is single and every, her children are grown. He is now 60 years old. He is single. His children is grown. When you meet him or her, you've got to deal with all of those spirits, not only intimately, but the DNA sexually, the soul tie sexually, from all the relationships of their past, and you have got to be able to contort and to refigure or to conform or reform to the mechanism of the meshing of your soul with that individual so that y'all can now become the brand you want. Now, the one thing that you must do is forgetting those things are behind, which are behind, and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So therefore, you forgive whatever mistakes that were made in that relationship or those relationships from the past and tell your partnership not to bring their past and to load their cargo onto your ship that's going to now navigate your future. If you are able not to bring all of your baggages from your past relationships into your present, and you are able to love brand new Johnny who got the money along with do funny who's surfing Susie's honey, then you got it sweet and ready to roll. But if you do not seek God and adjure him of the spirits that you're connecting with, you are just another number in the game. You are just another soul tie. You are just another victim of the vampire's blood of sexual feel-good five minutes. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Sir, I like you. I love your ham. And when it's all said and done, boom, boom, bang, terrero, bring out the sounds of good cheer. It is over. Do you hear me? Why did you say all that? Because Jesus, hallelujah, is tied to us, married to the backslider. Said, I want to be more connected to you than that man or that woman that you done been with and those that you done slept with in the past and those that have hurt you and harmed you and left you. I want to be the number one individual in your life to lead you, to care for you, to love you, and to serve you with all of my heart and to lead you into an eternal life like never before and show you love that you always wished that you had, that you never had, that you sought for, that you seek for. For I am love and God is love love and it is not some sexual or sensual thing it is a heartfelt condition of the freedom of the mind of the soul of the spirit that launches the individual into a new paradigm and a new paradox of life with God that leads them to e eternal and eternal blissfulness of that which can never be secured by the hands of mankind not money not gold, nor silver, nor houses, nor cars, nor yachts are able to fill the void in your life. And so therefore what you're searching for is love in all the wrong places. You went out the relationship. You went out the hallelujah. And you went through the pain and, and, and you stood in, in, in the test of time, in the rain, and in, in the solitude of your brokenness. And you bounced back as a brick wall because you are a brick house. We know that you got a mind, Mr. Knuckle, hard-headed man, and can't nobody tell you nothing. Your head is so hard until the devil broke the hammer over it, trying to hit it in the hell. His hammer head fell off and went to hell and burned up in the fire and said, this is a hard-headed mug here. Why? Because can't nobody tell us nothing. <laughs> Passes is 30 minutes in broadcast. Acts chapter number 
that he get up, well, he get up, uh, uh, four, and then the, 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 the verse number uh, uh, 33. And see, they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness. What you want is a leadership who is able to give witness to the word that he speak out of his mouth. Pastor, instead of praying for... <laughs> oh, God, help me, Jesus. Pastor, instead of preparing for a sermon on Sunday and Wednesday and Tuesday, your Bible study, to see how you're going to get the next good offering... What you need to do is be down on your knees. Now, some of y'all can't get on your knees. It's pitiful. You can't. Y'all, pe people don't get down on their knees. They don't do it no more. People do not get on their knees and pray. What do they do? Pray sitting in the chair with a plate full of food. Uh, honey, would you bring me some more of them pink feet? And uh, them, them uh, green, collard greens there, and a little bit of that cornbread. Lord, I got to pray for these saints. Lord, you know, uh, sister so and so going, Lord Jesus. No, what you need to do is put down your pig feet and get down on your knees. See, it's called neology. And what you need, pray for the mem pray for your, your, the, the members. Pray sincerely for your own church, your leadership. God put you there. Don't worry about a message. Don't worry about a topic. Wait till Sunday morning before you wake up out of bed. Don't write nothing down. Don't prepare nothing. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was up four hours last night getting my message together. And when I got up, I couldn't say nothing. I had nothing wrote down. Exactly. Because you're not, you, 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 you're seeking. The, you see, many times, your theology is good. Your rituals are all right. All that stuff is good. Your study is good. But to hear directly from God, and God get them to say, okay, here's what the church needs today. You wake up in the morning, oh, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I ain't prepared nothing. The Lord say, okay, here's what I want you to talk about. What? I want you to talk about love and forgiveness. I want you to talk about hurt and pain. And then God will give you the scripture. He'll say, go to Galatians. He'll say, deal with whatever it is to bring them out of it. You see, that's where we are, folks. Not in this pseudo mechanism of soothing, relieving, antibiotic ointment that they rub, rub on y'all to keep y'all from getting the sunburn. Because tell you the truth, a whole lot of y'all need a good sunburn instead of a suntan. Because if you get burnt one time just a little bit by that heat of hell, you'll get on back to heaven. Oh, um, happy belated Father's Day um, to all the fathers in the land. And they got the Juneteenth deal coming up. And did y'all see Perrytown or whatever that was, Texas, how that tornadoes, and that's nothing how the word came to pass, and I told y'all, I said, God said, not only your rural areas, but your inner cities. How you see a tornado go through the town, half the town. People are comfortable in their hatred, their racism, their stigmas, their dogmas, their separation, their families, their cities, their covens, their, uh, 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 what's the other word that I'm looking for? Start with the T. Um, uh, well, I think of it later on. But they're comfortable with all that stuff. You see, the havens, covens and havens, all right? And taverns, that's the word I'm looking for. And they're taverns of life. So they separate themselves by their colonies. Don't come into this town because we are full of hatred and racism. Now let me say it again. Again! When your pastor and you hear on your television, your hell of your visions, your visions of hell 
in your pseudo-Christian mechanism, in your great prophecies, in your infrastructure, in your expositors, in your leaders, in your teachers, in your servitude, in your criers, in your liars, with their dogs, in their cats, in their Africa, in their bees, in their sedans, in their Ethiopians. When you see all of these people continually, never ever speak the truth of hatred and racism, then if you hear them speak the truth and you hear them speak of hatred and racism and love over evil and murder and speak to the inner cities of blacks and whites and Hispanic and not worrying about the children of Israel that's coming home all over the nation and every unclean bird gathering in America to be hunted for the spoils of life. When your leader speaks against hatred and racism, don't leave him. Don't leave her. When they speak against evil and murder, do not leave that church. Your pastor and your leader have now heard from God and they are preparing you for the truth of the end time. If they are still saying to you, you know, you need to sow your seed, and God will multiply your seed. I got a testimony coming up from Lucille Brown over at Elevated Clown Services Award, and she is going to tell you how the miracle of spring water brought her back to life. This is a covenant that you have with God. He said to bring you all your tithe into the storehouse uh, that there would be meat in mine house. How do you think it is that God's house can go lacking uh, and your house filled with the promises of his? Uh, send your money to me so that I may fill my house and not God's house. Uh, and therefore, on top of that, uh, I will make sure I give you this promise, white, red cloth of the Valentine's heart that I gave to the prophets in the heifers of hell that use them in the blue lettering of their servitude in the packet of seed that I said to send back with their love gift. I have a penny. This is the money miracle penny. As you send me $20, I'm going to send you this penny. And when you touch it, God is going to heal you. And when you touch it, God is going to deliver your children and save your household just like he did with the doctor in the black penny from the witch of Andor. She took the the black penny. She shook his hand. He de she destroyed his family. She uh, took everything that he had saved for 50 years and a witch took everything that the queen of Sheba earned. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Come on! Detrimental to damnation! Don't say it! Because we don't believe it. <laughs> oh boy. That it cannot come like anybody. Verse number 33. Uh, Acts chapter number 4. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. That's what you're living in right now. The fatness of the land. Grace, you can't see it. God, their stoles are full. They got plenty of gas. They, they got cars. How? Oh, God, we cannot see it. They came out of the field with pigs and chicken and cotton and peanuts. And we're eating chitlins and, and hawk moths. And, 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 you know, it, 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 and now we, we, we got it made, got our hair fixed, long, blonde, green, yellow, red, on television, smiling, acting like the abomination of desolation. You know, you, you, and, and then they, they children fat. And, oh, God, you done blessed us so much. 
you to help us out. And, and you said, when I bring you out, at least you forget because I will turn you over to those that, that, you, that, that you serve. And you will have to go to them for their wealth and their riches. And, and you will have to gain favor. And God gave us favor with the white man. And he, gave, he put, the, put you in position to be marketed for multi-millions of dollars and, and not to sell your soul to society, but you stuck your booty in front of the camera with a black thong and gold on and told them this is where my billions come from. And now you got a naked perversion of Christ Jesus in your audience and in celebrity. Your belly is big and full of wine and full of beer. And you four and a half month pregnant with three demons, a lover, and a liar. And then on top of that, we try to figure out, oh, God, we love you. God, thank you. You done blessed me to get here if it wouldn't have been for you. Oh, I thank God for this trophy of sin that I got, this Academy Award, this golden ring, this golden cup. And we give you the glory, but yet you serve a pseudo mechanism of the liar from the pit of hell and you forgot where you came from, you forgot what God delivered you from, you forgot and you served your family and you served those that are of your character and that was of your position, you forgot your color, you forgot your skin, you forgot your nappy black hair, and you forgot that you were the Negro in the land of Oz. Don't I tell it. And y'all don't know how much it hurts me. Africa, my greatest fear is being hunted and killed by them. Africa, hear me. My greatest fear is to be hunted like an animal and killed by them. They hunt certain species. Can y'all not understand that Africa? And you are fighting over it in Sudan, and Ethiopia, and all that crazy mess over there. Black on black crime, like Russia in Ukraine, white on white crime. Can you not see? Do you not see this, the hypocrisy of the world? 2155, I wished I could speak to you. The test is hatred and racism. How did you survive? Your granddaddy, great-grandmama, and great-great-great-granddaddy, they're dead now. We're all dead. The people that I'm speaking to now are laughing this to scorn because the world is full of richness and fatness and greed and lasciviousness and lust. They are not hearing the word of the father, the son, the bride. We will go, but you will remain, for the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. And no man knoweth the time nor the hour except the Father in which he have set before us. 2155. Your great-great-grandmama and your great-grandmama and all them folks, they were some of the latest and stankingest children there ever were. Your grandmama and, and great-great-granddad and all them, that done died now 100 years, they were the stinking, the spoilest children you ever seen. They lazy, don't want to work, didn't want to do nothing. However y'all got there, those are the children we raising right now. They going to be y'all future. They call them millennium, millennial, and the babies that are coming in right now, those are y'all parents. And they fat, and they stinking little Oompa Loompa children. I'm closing. I got 15 seconds. Neither was there any lack among them. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Verse number 34 in closing. For as many were possessors of the land or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. 
and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Do you hear that, church? People, your pastors don't do this. They don't serve. Not all. Ten percent of them. Ninety percent are greedy, fat, piggish. In closing, in Jose uh, and Jonas, Jose, who, who by the apostle was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, the Levite, in the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the people's feet. Why? Because he's the son of consolation, Hosea's. He's the son of consolation, the one that cares, the one that loves. And you know, that's what, they, 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 ain't nobody, they, 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 they buy no land and selling no land to give them the church. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Happy Father's Day. Don't forget who the Father is. Father, the Son, the Bride. Okay? Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Y'all have a good night. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Love you too. Bye.